August 1st, so the start of a whole new stitching vlog. Um, we'll see how long I put together before I feel it's sufficiently long and I upload it. Um, a few things going on this month. Number one, Jim and I are taking two mini vacations. And we're able to do that because we're staying in a hotel very, very minimally. We're staying with friends um, for part of it. So first off, we are going to New Jersey, which I know probably you're going like, Emily's vacationing in New Jersey. It's not exactly a, you know, epic vacation destination. But Jim went to high school in New Jersey. So all his buddies are still living up in New Jersey. So that means they're all turning 40 this year and they kind of wanted to get together and have kind of a get together with the old buddies and celebrate their 40th birthday. So um, there'll probably be some trip footage in this vlog. Hopefully you guys don't mind that, us road tripping it up there and cool stuff we see. I'm gonna try to stop at an LNS or two. So if I get permission, you may see some of that. I Then we're gonna go to Myrtle Beach another weekend and that is kind of just a weekend trip because we're not extremely far from there. We're gonna meet some of his family that is really coming very far to go to Myrtle Beach there. So hopefully you'll get to see the ocean in this vlog. Um, hopefully you will get to see a new start in this vlog where I'm finally starting Big Red Ship. I have not started it yet. Um, I have promised another floss tuber that I would wait on her. And then me and her and one other floss tuber are gonna start it together. But I'll let them tell you all about that. But I got new fabric. Let's walk towards the door so we can have some light. Because I want you to see how gorgeous this is. This is Picture This Plus Cyprium. It's kind of green here. But it's, it's described as, think, falling leaves. I think it looks old. And I think that the ship is really going to be pretty on it. And of course, I've changed my mind about the colors. <laughs> but I'm going to let that be a surprise. Because I'm not completely set on it. And as I stitch, I'm making decisions. And you guys will see when I know. So there's that. Now that I'm home from work, and you can probably hear the cat's water fountain in the background. I know you can hear that in a lot of my videos. When the water gets even a little bit low, you can hear it. I find it very soothing and tune it out most of the time, but every now and then I'm like, what is that water sound? Oh yeah. I have a crap ton of laundry to try to get done, but the glory of laundry is when you're not actually folding or putting away or transferring loads and stitch in between. So I'm going to try to get some more stitching done. I probably need to uh, change these two little monsters litter box completely to want to get that really clean before we go out of town. And that's it. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon. One other thing I um, I gifted my sister, her birthday was a little bit earlier in July, but I gifted her the Not My Circus, Not My Monkeys piece yesterday, and she really liked it. She laughed. But after this, along with my stitching inserts that I always do, I will insert a picture of it finished and framed. It's August 5th. Jim and I are on the road. We drove how many hours yesterday, honey? Um, a long time. 
We left our house like 8 a.m. 12, um, 12 or 7 to 7. Yeah, we left the house about 8 a.m. We got to from Georgia to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania by like 7-ish last night. Checked into a hotel, got some dinner. Um, we had a couple of issues along the way. We left Georgia about midway through Tennessee. I was like, I'm hot. I'm hot. The air's not working. So when we stopped for lunch in Virginia? Yeah. Virginia? Yeah, it was, yeah South Virginia. We um, went in O'Reilly's and checked some stuff in the air conditioner and then we went to this other place and we ended up at a garage and they did some work on our air conditioner. So we're, he got it going again and we were like, sweet, wonderful. The air conditioning works and I was much less cranky. Wouldn't you say I was less cranky? Much less cranky. <laughs> much easier to deal with. <laughs> I'm not a happy camper when I'm hot and sweaty in the summer in a car. So we got going again and a few hours later it started doing the same thing again. So we have no idea what's wrong with the air conditioning in the car. But when we got in this morning, I'm cold. Are you cold? It's freezing in here. Who knows? So maybe my air conditioner is just pouting once you've had it running for an amount of time and says it's going to take its ball and go home. But right now we are heading north in Pennsylvania, heading towards New Jersey. And my loving husband, our first stop is going to be Needle Workers Delight. And he's going to bear with me while I geek out and go through everything in the store. Oh, we went to a cross-stitch store yesterday. But because of all the air conditioning problems and having to go to that mechanic, we, we got there like right before they closed. So, and it was a teeny tiny little store in Waynesboro, Virginia called Cross-Stitch Station really nice lady there but she wasn't the lady that owned it she seemed like she was just covering so she didn't know a whole lot about what they had or where it was in the store so I kind of got a little overwhelmed and ended up not buying anything but they very much um, you could tell they had a style that they kept in stock which wasn't necessarily my style so may not have been the best store for me but if any of you are in the area check it out it was a cool little shop but we're continuing to head towards New Jersey and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, it is Tuesday, August the 9th. Jim and I got back from vacation late last night and um, I didn't film like I thought I was going to. Um, I didn't stitch like I thought I was going to. Uh, we just stayed super busy, hanging out with friends, doing stuff the entire time. So my little bit of stitching that I got done will be the shot that you saw right before this. Like nothing on To Follow You, I'm not content. I didn't even stitch last night when we got home because we drove straight for 12 and a half hours from New Jersey to Georgia. So it's just, tonight I will. Actually, as soon as I get done filming this, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, what all happened? Great time with Jim's friends, we had a blast. So much fun. I know he enjoyed seeing all those guys again. I enjoyed meeting the people that I hadn't met. It was just, it was great. I would like to make it a regular trip. Um, I told you about the shop I went to in Virginia and didn't buy anything. I went to Needleworkers Delight. I loved the shop. I loved it. It was really nice. Um, things were arranged by subject matter, a lot of it, which I found helpful because I very much have like, subject matters and genre which are my thing so it allowed me to find some stuff that I had not seen before um, rather than when it's arranged by designer and you if it, anyway I'll get to that so I'll show you what I got at Needleworkers Delight I got four charts two pieces of fabric and some hand dyed threads Yes, I saved for this trip. Like, I knew I was going, my vacation money was going to be on stitching stuff. The first thing I picked out was in a Halloween bin. I've never heard of this designer before. It was an inexpensive chart. It's like 90 by 60 stitches. <laughs> if This is me. This is so me. Flowers planted in a skull with the petals falling off. I very much liked this. I've never heard of this designer before. I actually looked her up today and did not even see this chart. I only saw other things, but 
I'm happy that I ran across this one day. I also picked up um, Kelly, the Evergreen Needle. Evergreen Needle showed a chart recently that she has started that is Quaker Gone Tropic, and that's so Kelly. So I saw it stitched up in the shop and was looking at the other stuff on that wall and was flipping through the basket of charts, and I found this. And I said, this, if Quaker Gone Tropic is Kelly's, Quaker Gone Poe is mine. This, oh, this is so cool. I, I've never seen this one before. So it's pretty great. And you've got the Raven on here. And you've got EA Poe, Nevermore stitched in. Just a lot of kind of gothic and old iconography. And then up here it says Annabelle Lee. That is significant to me because I have an older brother and sister, both of which are significantly older than me. My brother is 12 years older than me, and I can remember when I was a little girl, he would, he felt like that it was his job to expose me to literature and music and stuff like that that I needed to know about. So he used to read Edgar Allan Poe to me as a child, um, particularly Annabelle Lee. I can remember him reciting that to me more than once. So I really like this one a lot. So I got this, Quaker Gone Poe. And this is Michelle Ink Needlework Designs. And then in the same section, they had um, Quaker Gone Spooky, which I will get one day, but I've seen that other places. But I had not seen this. They said that... Well, he said that they had not had it long, but it's copyright now that I look at it, 2008. This is Michelle Ink Needlework Designs under the old oak tree. They had one stitched up in the shop and it was so much prettier stitched up. And it comes with this charm, little tree charm, which honestly, I don't even see in the picture. Oh, pewter charm included as a special gift in the anniversary year production of this chart. So maybe it doesn't even go on this. Maybe it's just a free gift. But one of my favorite things about this chart, other than the fact that I love, you know, art with trees, you've got the moon and the stars, and you've got all of these little animals. But then you have this grasshopper. That's a grasshopper. He could eat those cats. The grasshopper could easily eat those cats. Why is the grasshopper so big? <laughs> I love that about this chart. Very cool. And then Jim found this chart. There was like a bargain um, baskets of charts that were like $4.95, anything in the baskets at the front. And he pulled this one out and says, this looks like you. It is a reproduction sampler. Um, Sarah Parr, 1825, North England Sampler. I really like the moths on it, and the stags, and all of the border work. But what I really liked about it was the verse. It says, They're only great whom no base motive rules, who owe no glory to the breath of fools. Good without pride, so humble yet not mean, in danger fearless, and in death serene. It's it's a beautiful verse, but then it amazes me that, you know, I mean, just the stitching alone by a 10-year-old, but something like that on this piece that a 10-year-old did. So one day, I'll do this. This may sit in my stash for a while, but it's pretty fantastic. So, good job, Jim. Did a great job picking that out. So, those are the charts that I got at Needleworkers Delight. And I got two pieces of fabric. They were having a great sale when I was there. Everything in the store was 25% off. And linens were 35% off. So, I bought two pieces. This is a Solo um, Wexford linen, which you guys know I love. 
and it's like blue and brown. I don't really have anything that is kind of a sky bluish color, so I like the idea of having this in stash for when I want that and love that fabric. Then I picked out another bagged piece off of their wall, which is funny because after I picked it out, like I laid out a bunch of fabrics, so I was like, I'm only gonna let myself get two. And the one that I picked out is another piece of Mukaiite stone, which is what I did my anatomical heart on. This one looks very different than my piece that I had though. It's just the coloring is different. But it's still beautiful. So I ended up getting these pieces that were marked at $23 for like $14.95 with the sale. It was, I probably should have gotten another piece, but I didn't. They have to be good. I have to at least have some restrictions on myself. But I love this color. I don't know what I'll use it for, but I have it in stash for when I'm ready. Here's a funny story. So I'm spending all kinds of time in the store. I've been there probably about an hour where I've narrowed it down to those charts. I've just finished looking at this fabric and I have a project that I would really like to do all with hand dyed floss and I want to pick the colors myself. So I was like, this is an excellent opportunity. I'm gonna go, since everything's 25% off, I'm gonna go over to their hand dyed floss and I'll just, I'll pick a large handful of colors to get me started. Well, as I'm walking from the fabric to floss, I noticed these two women looking at me and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I was like, hi. <laughs> and they said, hi. And then they hesitated. And then they were like, are you in the C? That, it was really funny. And they were like, we watch your videos. You're from Georgia. <laughs> You know you're from Georgia, right? You don't live in New Jersey. But anyway, it was really funny, and I ended up hanging out with them and talking to them for a while. And ladies, I'm terrible with names. Susan and Nancy? I believe it was Susan and Nancy, and if that is wrong, please don't be offended because I would forget my own child's name if I had one. But Jim did take a picture of us together, which I will insert after this. Uh, once I'm done with this segment. They were really cool, but they told me about this other shop that they said that I had to go to. Um, but before I get to that, I bought Classic Colorworks Cauldron. And yes, I'm going through these because I'm really excited about my hand dye threads. Um, and I'm mixing them all up. Simply Shaker, Brick Path, which is browns and reds. And then Gentle Art Cherry Bark, which is just a beautiful burgundy-ish brown. If I could afford to have done started Big Red Ship, I mean, that might have been a color for it if I did it all in hand dyed. And then um, Gentle Art Sampler Threads, Deep Sea. Gentle Art Sampler Threads. Black Crow, just kind of a navy. Classic Colorworks, Roasted Chestnut. And then Sampler Threads, Blueberry, which is just a gorgeous color. My skin's so white, it acts as a good backdrop. Not ashamed, I actually love that. I wish I were paler. Uh, Sampler Threads, uh, Current. Beautiful reds and burgundies. Classic Color Works English Ivy. And then Classic Color Works Yield Gold. But I have a project that I'm hoping to start before the year is over that I'm going to use kind of a, this kind of color palette for. That's my plan right now. We know how my plans go. I change my mind several times and then end up doing something completely different and then sometimes come back to my original idea. So 
That is everything from that shop. And then the next morning, I got up and went to a place in, oh, that shop is in Matuchin, and if I'm mispronouncing this New Jersey town, my bad. The next shop was in Clifton, New Jersey, and it's where Victoria's Angels stitch. Like, you pull up and, like, the sign is peeling. Like, you go, are they out of business? Are they open? But then you get in there and you're like, holy crap. <laughs> Charts. Charts, 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 charts. Charts out the ass. So I wander around and I look at everything. She has a lot of like reproduction sampler charts. She has a lot of memorabilia. I mean, she has a lot of stuff. But I found her section of old prairie moon charts. So here's what I got. She also had some primitive needle stuff. She had one good huswife pattern, which are like my favorite out of print designers. Primitive needle stuff, she didn't really have anything that I wanted that I didn't already have. And she didn't have any of the ones that are like the really coveted ones, so don't get too excited. But um, she did have a, an okay selection of Prairie Moon. So here's what I got. First off, I bought this one. It's one I've been wanting for a while and had not seen at a price that I was willing to pay. She had this one for $14. So I grabbed it. And she wasn't having any kind of sales. So whatever things were priced at is how much it was. And then Missing You, which I kept almost buying on eBay and not buying on eBay and almost buying and not buying until when I saw it in the store, I was like, just buy it. Just buy it. You know you love it. You know you're going to stitch it. Love that bird. The bird is really cool. And just all of the, the design elements in it. And then I bought two sugar skull patterns. She actually had m several more of the Prairie Moon sugar skull patterns. But I was like, how many sugar skulls do you need? You've already bought the other one at the other stop shop. So I picked out my two favorite. So I bought Roses from the Dead. which I really liked. And my favorite one is this one in lieu of flowers. Ah, oh, this one excites me. I really like this chart. But that is my trip haul. Um, Needle Workers Delight gave me like a free um, tape measure and a pen. And then they gave me like some, looks like some Ada in this chart, just for it being my first time in there, because apparently they're awesome like that. And if the, you guys hear a noise in a second, I'm going to try to wrap it up before the clock hits six, because our automatic feeder is still on from where we went on our trip. And Buster is impatiently waiting next to it. So I'll wrap this up. I'm going to get started stitching, and hopefully we'll actually have another progress pick after this, after the picture of me and the ladies from the needle workshop. So hopefully I will have much more to show you progress over the week. And then we're going to the beach this weekend. So that will be fun. Bye guys. So as you already saw in the photo, I started beading Angel of Love yesterday. It's so hard to capture the beads in a photograph or even in a video. I'm really enjoying this. Maybe if we get, let's see, an angle. Yeah, you can see them in person. It's pretty awesome. Where's my feet? Anyway, uh, just kind of wanted to capture some of this as I go so you guys can see it. I've never really beaded much before, so I wanted to start on the skirt because it's so busy. I felt like if it took me a while to get the hang of beading so many beads close to each other, 
you wouldn't see it as much there as say in the halo or or the the ball or globe or whatever it is she's holding in her hands so slowly but surely here we go I'm gonna set this down make me and Jim some some dinner real quick I think I'm making us breakfast for dinner some scrambled eggs and whatnot then back to this bye Hey guys, it's August 15th. It's Monday. It's been a little bit since I filmed. Um, we got back from the beach today. I did not film any while I was at the beach. I was a very bad vlogger. Um, but anyway, I'll get to that. Before I left, I got a large amount of progress done on Angel of Love's beading. You can see, um, well, I've got the pattern covering part of her, but like almost the top third of her is or of the skirt is completely beaded. I haven't done any of this up here. But I'm really pleased with my progress there. It's so much fun. But I did not want to take her on vacation because I was having enough trouble getting beads everywhere and keeping up with beads with this at home. So we left and went to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina to meet some of Jim's family for just a really quick weekend trip, like left Saturday morning back today on Monday. It, it just reaffirmed to me, I'm not a beach person. I'm not a beach person at all. It's too hot. It's too humid. I don't like sand. I don't like people. <laughs> I'm glad to be home. I'll leave it at that. While I was there, I stitched just a little bit. I brought several pieces, one of which was this, which is Mermaid's Folly by the Courtney Collection. I have completed pages one and two and decided instead of continuing to go across, I wanted to work down. So this is actually page nine and it starts, sorry, moving the camera. It starts right here. So all of this I did yesterday Sunday for a couple of hours in the afternoon and I did some on the drive back today driving in the car with my husband is good and bad it's good because it takes my mind off of how close he's driving behind the car in front of us which he's famous for doing and it's bad because my husband is all about what well, the GPS says I can do it in six hours I wonder how quick I can do it. So we get up to speeds that I prefer not to discuss, um, which means, especially working on this 36 count, it's hard because it's like doing this as we're going down the road, and sorry if that bothered anyone, <laughs> but it's really hard to find your place and where your needle needs to go. Anyway, so I, that my stitching speed was not as fast as usual today. But I'm trying to get some more done on this before I, I put it away for the night and just really enjoy being at home again. And I am watching some floss tube. This is Stephanie's latest vlog, Miss Oh So Crafty. I enjoy her vlogs. I enjoy all of her products. In fact, this one is showing where she's working on Earth Goddess, which is a project I would really like to do one day. So, such a cool project. But anywho, of course, if you didn't guess already, my husband Jim is at the gym. So I'm just having some quiet time, which I'm going to get back to now. And I will update you guys with a clip after this and some more video another day. Hey guys, it's Monday, August the 22nd. I haven't filmed much lately, and I'm, so I'm going to play catch up and show you what's going on. Number one, um, I have been getting some work done on Mermaid's Folly. I started working on this when we were at the beach. And um, you can kind of see the page line where it stops right up here. I've done everything from my thumb down. 
and this down here is the bottom of the page. So I've got to bring this down and then fill in this section right here and I'll be done with that page. But I've kind of put this aside for just a little bit because I am continuing to work on beating Angel of Love. I've got my tacky bob here, kind of scoot that up so you can see. I've got all of the beads done, I would say almost like the top two thirds now. You can see the beads a little bit better from that angle. But yeah, I've, I've got two needle minders here that I've just been kind of propping my tappy, tacky bob on while I sew so that my beads are super close to, to my stitching and it's speeding me up. And then I've been magneting my pattern to the top there. Well, there's Dharma. Um, and it's been going pretty fast. Pretty happy with it. Um, what else is going on? Um, this is new. I've been doing the whole stitchy fit thing that Tracy and Mackenzie had started. And... I've been wanting one of these for a while, so I bit the bullet and got one, and it has become, do you hear the scratching? That's my cat, Dharma, saying that she's done with her dinner and trying to bury it with non-existent dirt or sand on our hardwood floors. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, so I got this, and it sets an automatic goal for you to do 10,000 steps a day. I am ridiculously, set, ridiculously sedentary in my job. I'm not even going to tell you how little I walk every day, but I have gotten nowhere close to 10,000 steps. Not even yesterday. Of course, yesterday is the day that I set it up. So I guess I shouldn't. I shouldn't, you know, be too hard on myself yet. But I set it up yesterday afternoon, and Jim and I went for a walk at the park. We did over two miles at the park, and that was like 4,000 steps. I, it feels like it should be more than that. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying. I'm working on it. And one of the things that really annoys me about this is... It tracks where it can feel the motion of a step. I assumed that it would also be able to track cycling or something like that. It can't. I got on our stationary bike in the garage earlier, and I had to manually log that because it was unaware that I had done it. Um, so I had to manually log 30 minutes on the stationary bike and the distance that I did. And then it didn't count that distance toward... I, I don't know. But... I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll see. And that's that. Oh, I bought... I have some haul, too. I'll show that next time. I'll make sure to lay it out on the table. It's only one thing, but I'll show you that the next time I record. I'm going to get back to beading. Bye, guys! So it's Sunday, I think it's the 28th, and Buster's just sunbathing and being adorable, aren't you buddy? You're such a ham, you're such a ham.
Tell everybody hello. Oh, you hit your head. How cute are you? How cute is Buster? Are you the cutest cat ever? You are? Well, that, that's, that's you having kind of a big head, isn't it? Huh? Huh? <laughs> what happened, Dharma? Did he smack you in the face for trying to steal the spotlight? Buster. Oh, pumpkin. Okay, that's enough kitty time, but you guys had to see all the cuteness. Hey guys, it is the very last day of August, which means I'm hoping to have this uploaded tomorrow, maybe late tonight. Um, I have not filmed in a while, and I realize I have not filmed my face in a while. I don't know what was up with that. I think it was a lot of days of me being very unhappy with uh, me. And in just complete honesty, it was a lot of bummy days where I just, the idea, the thought of showing me just wasn't appealing. But, you know, we all have those days. So, here's me. Um, I'm going to show you an update, some things you've probably already seen in picture form or in video so far, just kind of going back through the last few weeks, what I've done so you can actually see it, and a few more things. Let's start off with... Let's start off with Angel of Love. I was working on her primarily for the All That Glitters, um stitch along event, whatever that was going on in, I think, Cross Stitch and Discuss. So I was doing a lot of her beads. She, I'm pretty proud, guys. I'm pretty happy with how she's looking. I mean, can you see the shimmer? I put a video up on there. I haven't done any of the beads up here yet. But I mean, look at that from the side. She's just looking phenomenal. I mean, kudos to the designer on this. It is, I couldn't be more pleased. And seeing her in, in this light, and I just wish you guys could see her in person because the way the light reflects on those beads, kind of a close up. So I've got to finish the beading at the bottom of the skirt, and I've got to do the beading and the back stitching at the top, and she's done. Done. So that's great. And once she's done, which I'm hoping to finish, honestly, I'm hoping to finish her next month in September. Cat hair. And then I'll go ahead and take her to the framers and get it done and ready and be happy with my choices and the final result in time to wrap her up for my mom for Christmas. Speaking of my mom, she is, the, I continue to say she's the toughest lady I know, but yesterday was her and my dad's wedding anniversary. Dude, it was hard for me. I don't know why it was hard for me, but it was hard for me. I can't even imagine, like, the difficulty that that was for her. So, kudos to a tough lady. But I reached out to her. I didn't mention the anniversary or anything like that. Just, you know, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hope you're having a great day. Because she was gone with her sister. And I think I discussed before, I can't remember if I told you guys or not, that my plan there was a plan in place where I was going to go spend the anniversary with my mom 
And then we realized, my sister and I, that we were both complete morons because we were planning it for a month ago yesterday. Anyway, I think I already told you that, so I'm not going to go into it again. Anyway, Mermaid's Folly. I finished pages 1, 2, 9, and 17. And that sounds random, but you'll understand in a second because that completes the very left edge. It's looking great, but I still have a lot to go. So, you're actually starting to be able to see what's going on there, though. It's obviously some sort of winged, claw-footed creature. And all the fabric. I really love this one. This one is going to be framed and hang in mine and Jim's bedroom when it's done. Like, it's going to be a weird shape. And, but I think... We're, yes, we're a couple with a television in our bedroom because TV is important to us. <laughs> um, I think it's a perfect shape to hang above the television in our bedroom because I look at the TV a lot. So I would see this a lot and I am really, really like it. I love this piece. So there's that. I also have a new start. Um, Trisha th thrust this pattern upon me when I said I wanted it. I was going to pay her for it and she just gifted it to me because she's awesome like that. So I got this because I became obsessed with it after seeing several people stitch it, particularly after seeing Olivia buy it. And then initially Olivia and I were going to start it together and then Sarah said that she wanted to join in with us and then we made Tracy join in with us. So now the four of us started this it's today Wednesday we started this Monday all of us together and then there are several other floss tubers who are working on it too I know um, Abby is working on it and Davina is working on it and I'm just excited to see this chart getting so much love because it's so cool and beautiful and if you read the back of it how she actually did all this research into these historical ship cloths to design it and, you know, go on Google, look, image search, or just read about Tampin or Sumatran ship cloths and see all these beautiful cloths that these people did. So, I was originally going to do this in blue. And then I changed my mind and decided I was going to do it in dark red. And then I changed my mind back to blue. <laughs> so, here's what I have so far. You can see that um, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things. I just have, let me do this here, this. <laughs> yeah, a bitty piece of the border done. This is DMC 3808 on Picture This Plus 36 Count Cyprium. And my lighting is so good, you can see through this at the moment. Fancy hand action. This is not the only color I'm going to use on this. You will also see some gray or DMC 3799. You will also see some black. And you will also see a couple of other shades of blue. I think I have... Hold that. Might as well just show you. We get real fancy with it. Crinkle, crinkle. Okay, so we also have $37.99 that's going on here. You know what black looks like. There is some old $8.23. Yoink. And $37.50. So these shades of blue are going to go on here as well. I am most in love with this. So I think that this is going to be the predominant color that these others are going to get thrown in. I'm pretty psyched about it. I'm just going to wing it as I go. 
and figure things out and put in colors. But yeah, it's going to be mainly 3808. Second um, most common is probably going to be this 3750. I actually think there's a wave border because I'm just looking at it myself and not making sure you can see it. There is a wave border that goes through here. I think I'm going to do the two bars in gray or black. No, I'm going to do this in black with the wave in this 3750 blue. And there's a border that comes down the side. I think I'm going to do that in gray and then just do a bunch of fill-in. The actual ship itself, a large part of the structure, I think I'm going to do in black because when you look at a lot of the old historical ones, sometimes the ship is more prominent. I really like the idea of maybe that being in the part in black. I have way too many whips and not enough time. Way too many plans and ideas and not enough time. I think that this is probably a pretty common problem. Anywho. So I'm pretty psyched about this. I'm gonna work on this probably for the next week, get back to this today. But before I get back to it, um, I have some plans. I want to get this uploaded. I want to prepare a shipment to go out tomorrow. Um, the lovely Adele reached out to me and said that she had a fabric that she had gotten that just wasn't, wasn't her. It wasn't her. But she felt like it was very me. And that she wanted to send it to me if I would like it. And I said, you know what, Adele? I got a fabric that's not very me, but that's very Adele. So let's do a trade. So we're gonna trade some fabric. She's sending me this murky, dark, gray, depressing, which I love, fabric. And I'm sending her bubblegum pink and purple. <laughs> so Adele, this is what's gonna come your way as soon as I get it in the mail. Um, yeah, this is all lavender and pink. You're going to love it. I can't imagine what I would ever stitch on it, but you're going to love it. And I can't wait to see what you put on it. So, Adele, coming to you, babe. And I'll see if Jim has some stickers so I can, like, hype it up for you and make it more exciting because I know you're into that. Haul. I have only purchased one cross-stitch related thing recently. And this is something I feel like I want to start in October. I've been dying to have the Halloween fairy kit. I love her. She is just so cute. I will say the threads that come with her perplex me. It's another one of those where I really don't feel like the picture on the front matches what's on the back. So you can see here that like, it looks like kind of minty olive and dark rustic colors. And then on the back, like, that's a really bright orange. That orange looks much brighter than that. Or maybe, maybe that's right. I don't know. I'm going to use it. I am, however, I might try my hand at doing some, too close to the camera, I'm getting way too excited. I might try my hand at dyeing this piece of fabric that came with it. Because I would kind of like it to have a hand dyed effect. We'll see. I'll get back to you on that. That may happen in September, dyeing this piece of fabric. So, Trisha, for science, and this piece of fabric may get thrown away and I sew it on something completely different. Um, a couple of other things. I mentioned earlier doing the whole stitchy fit thing that Tracy and Mackenzie did. Trying to lose some of this weight. Um, I lost a lot when Jim was in the hospital because I was just super stressed out. And it was the kind of stressed out where I wasn't eating. So I dropped a lot of weight. And then my dad died, and I gained it all back in the weight of peanut butter M&Ms and cake and cheese and bread and anything I could get my hands on. And I'm still kind of having an issue with that, but I'm trying to make myself stop. Because I did once upon a time have collarbones. They're there. They've disappeared. 
other parts may have gotten much predominantly larger than they used to be, but you know, whatever, we're working on it. So once I get this edited together and started uploading, I am taking my rear end to the park and walking. I've been trying to do that pretty regularly. It doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot for me. I'm a pretty sedentary person. So going to the park and walking is huge. Everything is an effort. Um, I am having issues again with my skin, which I hate. And part of that is the fact that I have a lot of stress. Part of that is the fact that it is August in Georgia and it's a lot of sweat. <laughs> it's gross, but there's a lot of sweat. There's a lot of oil, it happens. And then part of it is, don't you hate it when you fall in love with a product? Like I loved my face soap and then they stopped making it. So I hunted it down and I was buying it through Amazon. And now, like, I can't even get it through Amazon. Or I can, but it's ridiculously expensive and it's probably really old and I don't need to be using it. So I'm on the search of a new soap that my skin is happy with. It's a process. Um, so here's the deal. I'm going to go in the route of other floss tubers recently and say, this is not advertised, but if you made it this far into my video, good for you. Because guess what? I'm doing a giveaway. Tomorrow is September 1st. Tomorrow is my one year floss tube anniversary. I'm doing this for a year now. It does not feel like it. But I love you guys and I love doing it. I plan on keep doing it. I plan to keep doing it. Um, it's been a month since I put one up, so I'm going to try to get back at least monthly every two weeks getting it done. But yeah, let's celebrate. Let's give some stuff away. We're going to give some stuff away. Okay, so I went through and stuff that I'm rehoming. Things that I may not necessarily love and someone else might. I have a piece of 32 count linen from Not Forgotten Farm. People love this stuff. Love it. This is a fat quarter. But I don't love it. It's a little stiff for me. But it is very rustic looking. It is a gorgeous piece of fabric. It could be yours. So there's this piece of dyed fabric from Not Forgotten Farm. There's this piece of fabric that I got and it was a little brighter than I thought it was gonna be. I don't love it, I bet you will. I do not remember the name of this, I'm sorry, but it reminds me of summer. It's from Angel Wings Mermaid Tales, um, designer Leslie Berlin. This is also a 32 count. I believe this is a 32 count Belfast. In fact, looking at it, I know it is. It's orange and yellow. It is a dyed orange and yellow fat quarter. Could be yours. What else do we have? I've already stitched Rampant Cats. You could too. This is my slightly used copy of Barbara Anna's Rampant Cats. I stitched it. I'm not going to stitch it again. You should. I love this chart. It was so much fun. The one over one at the top nearly killed me, but you know what? You're going to love it. This was an impulse buy. I don't think I'm going to stitch it. I just don't. I have a million ink circles patterns. This could be yours. Celtic Beasties, Christmas or not. Make some ornaments just in time for Christmas. Could be yours. These were gifted to me. I can see someone else really loving them. This reminds me of the 12 days of Christmas that a lot of people are doing, but more in a Santa theme. I've never seen this chart before. I got it in the chart of a bunch of other things. I'm not gonna stitch it. You might. This is the Sudbury House Designer Series Nine Santa Sampler. It says Santa is the spirit of Christmas. It's beautiful. It really is. There's some gorgeous detail in here. It's a black and white chart.
you should stitch this. Lastly, for those of you fantasy lovers, this is a really cool book, but I don't see me stitching anything out of it. Not, I just don't. But I see a lot of you loving it, and why should I hold it for myself and just hoard it in my collection? This is Julie Hassler's Fantasy Cross Stitch. I'll show you a couple of things from here. Get you a little hyped up and excited about it. We've got this wizard and Thor-ish character. Pegasus and a unicorn. All of the astrological signs have these little circular representations. So if you're really into astrology, it looks like they also have depicted all of the elements. I mean, it, there really are some beautiful charts in here. And then some other depictions. There's a lot of stuff in here. You could love it. I don't. Also, once a winner is chosen, um, Did that just lose everything? It better not have. Hopefully I can just tack on to the end of that. Someone called me. <laughs> Recording on my phone. Awesome. Okay, so last but not least, also included in this drawing is going to be, um, I don't sell them, but I know that you guys know that I make my own needle minders a lot. I've gotten to the point where I prefer the ones that I make for myself. So, um, depending upon who wins, I'll check you out on Instagram. I'll check out your Facebook posts. I'll, if you have a floss tube, I'll look at it. And if I have something that's more your style, your speed than others, I'll make you a handful of binders and put those with it. So, I mean, it could be something like this, or these are all attached to where my thing is, or something like this, or one of my little Halloween binders. Who knows? The excitement is real, guys. <laughs> so, um, how do you enter? Don't mention a giveaway in your comment. Because I don't, I don't want a lot of people going, ooh, giveaway. Um, what should you do? Recently, another floss tuber, and I won't say which one, because you don't want you running over there to hers and doing the same. Um, said answer a question that I'm about to give to you in the comments and I'll know that you want to be entered so I'm gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna say not anything super random but I'm gonna say what is my favorite piece that I have done in the past year of all of my year on floss tube what's your favorite that's it just say my favorite piece you've done is and I'll know you want to be entered. It's that easy. It's that simple. I will mail to anywhere in the world. And I'll probably include in a couple of extra goodies that you don't even know about here. So, so anyway, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making this past year really enjoyable. Thank you for being there with me as I went on this stitching journey as I went through a lot of personal things. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Um, and I, you know, you guys mean a lot to me. So I wanna, I wanna share that back to you. That's it. I'm not gonna keep saying the end and rambling. I'm actually gonna end this here. And um, you guys comment down below what your favorite piece that I've worked on is and I'll enter you in the drawing and I will close.